guys, so I am here today to recommend to you some Scottish literature. I recently asked if you had any video requests on Instagram with the new sort of questions feature which I'm quite enjoying <laughs> and somebody requested a book recommending Scottish books. So I had a little bit of think and it is something I've kind of had in the back of my mind to do for a while but I've always thought to myself what defines a piece of literature as a specific nationality. So is it Scottish literature because it's set in Scotland? Is it Scottish literature because it's written by a Scottish author who defines themselves as a Scottish writer? Um, do they only have to have lived there for a few decades or do they have to have been born there? Does it matter if they left Scotland as a child? All of these things and I think it just shows the kind of kind of arbitrariness of nationality anyway but I thought about it long and hard and I think the people I've got in this video are all Scottish authors in that they were born or have lived in Scotland for a long time and most of these books are set in Scotland as well because I think that's what you want as a reader if you're looking for Scottish literature recommendations. You want to experience the world of Scotland through your reading. So. I think that you can do that through a lot of these books um, and I hope that you do enjoy some of these recommendations. They are of course as well just some of my favourites as opposed to an exhaustive list of the best Scottish literature. This is just one Scots opinion. I am going to kick off with what is often considered a true classic of Scottish literature though and probably my favourite book in this list it's the book I immediately think of when somebody asks for a recommendation of a piece of Scottish literature. I adore it so I, I really just want to make sure it's up front and centre and that is Sunset Song by Lewis Grassic Gibbon. So this book is set in the early 1900s and follows our protagonist Chris Guthrie who is a young girl who's grown up in a farming home in rural Scotland in the Highlands and her family farm the land and that's how they make their living and she's always grown up quite rurally. However, she's also a very clever young woman. She shows a great aptitude for learning at school and one of the reoccurring themes throughout this book is kind of Chris's attachment to the land and rural Scotland but also her interest in um, the city and whether she's going to move to the city and that's one of the main strains because it really is a coming of age story. It's about Chris going, growing up. We follow her from a young girl through all the hardships in her life into her late teens, early 20s. Um, and and she, she goes through some major hardships, including a world war. And it's not a piece of world war literature, I would necessarily describe it, but Chris is living in Scotland when the country goes to war and the men she knows go off to war. She's affected by how war comes to Britain and Scotland. Apart from that, there's so many other things that happen that are very harrowing. But at the same time, Chris is just such a powerful character. I felt so close to her when I read this book and I read it as a teenager. It is written by a man yet it seems to do such an amazing job of exploring the coming of age of a young woman. I think it's just fantastic and I felt so connected to her as a character. I feel like she's such a strong character in the sense that she has a really strong defined personality. She is exploring herself. She is she is curious and uncertain but at the same time um, has strength in her convictions when she does believe in them and she is such a wonderful person to follow. And what makes this as well such a wonderful piece of Scottish literature is that it combines English and Scots prose. So Scots is a language separate from English, separate from Gaelic and it's the language that Robert Burns wrote in and it did actually um, evolve at the same time as English but separately and, and although some of it resembles English some of it is also very very different. And nowadays it's not necessarily a language that people speak exclusively as it's more been interwoven with people's English in Scotland. So words like bairn which mean child are very just casually used amongst regular um, English language in Scotland. And in this book they speak in a Scots dialect in all of the um, speech whereas the narrative is written in English and I just think um, it's really interesting to read. I think 
It also means if you're not Scottish and aren't familiar with Scots, you can still read and enjoy this book, but get a taster and a flavour for that Scots language. And it's just beautifully done. It's also structurally beautiful, full of so much wonderful imagery, and the first in a series, which I've never actually completed, and I would like to one day read the next two in the series, but I would highly, highly recommend this book. But for those of you who aren't familiar, I did just mention another Scottish author, and that is Rabbi Burns, or Robert Burns. Rabbi Burns was a Scots poet in the 1700s. If you were raised in Scotland, then you will know that this man is a national treasure. We even have a Burns night or a Burns supper in January, which is one night of the year where we celebrate Rabbi Burns, his poetry, we read his poetry, we have haggis, neeps and tatties, and it's just very traditional. I was even named after his wife, who was called Jean, and he was a poet and he wrote so many, so many poems. Some of his most famous ones are things like Ode to Haggis, uh, Tam O'Shanter, which is one of my favourites. And Tam O'Shanter is a long poem, so it's a long narrative poem with a story behind it. And it's about a young man who comes across um, a sort of coven of witches and creatures of, of demonic nature. Um, dancing in a circle and conducting magical dark rites one night and it's very spooky, very eerie, perfect for a Halloween night and written in Scots throughout. So the one thing I will say reading Rabbi Burns, if you're not familiar with Scots at all, it's going to be a little bit tricky because there's a lot of words in there that you won't know, although you can get English translations of Burns. Um, another Burns poem that lots of people are probably familiar with is Auld Lang Syne, which is a song that people now sing across the world on Hogmanay, which is New Year's Eve. Hogmanay is the name for New Year's Eve in Scotland. But even if you're not familiar with Scots per se, I would still recommend giving Rabbi Burns' poetry a shot in the original language because you can figure it out and you can look up certain words and make it make sense and it really is at its best in Scots. It's beautiful to read, it's beautiful to listen to, and you can find people reciting it on YouTube, I'm sure. So I think you can't make a video of Scottish literature recommendations without mentioning Rabbi Burns's poetry. But for those of you who are a little bit intimidated by the thought of reading things in Scots, I do have some more modern Scottish literature, which although perhaps um, includes Scottish dialect and language in there, is written in English prose. So my first recommendation is an author named Kirsty Logan, who is a very contemporary author. She has had a few books come out in the past few years and is still writing. I have read both her novel The Grace Keepers and her short story collection A Portable Shelter in the past, both of which I'd recommend but I particularly want to mention A Portable Shelter here. So A Portable Shelter is a collection of magical realism, folktale, fairy tale-esque short stories inspired in part by classic Scottish folktales and those images are very much interwoven throughout the collection. They are also interconnected short stories in that there is a slight overarching narrative where these stories are being told by two women who are pregnant with their first child. Uh, one of the women is obviously pregnant with the couple's first child and they are telling the child stories in the womb. But one of the things they promised never to do was to lie to their baby. So in a sense, these stories are meant to say something innately true within them and they're beautifully written, um, beautiful short stories. I think if you enjoy short stories or even haven't quite got into them, they're worth checking out because they just have such a beautiful sense of magic together. And I think because they're interconnected in that way, they're quite a good in to short stories if you've, if you've not read a lot in the past. And I think there is something um, a little bit magical and Scottish about them. And Kirsty Logan is, of course, a Scottish author, so I would highly recommend those. Another very famous contemporary Scottish author is Ali Smith. Now, Ali Smith has written a plethora of works. Uh, one of my favourites of which is Girl Meets Boy, which is actually inspired by the Greek or Roman myth of Iphis, which is told in Ovid's Metamorphosis. And this book is set in Scotland, although I think part of it's set in England as well, from what I remember, and it uses that myth to explore gender and sexuality in the contemporary world. It's in a contemporary setting and it follows a cast of characters whose gender is fluid, who don't conform to gender roles, who are exploring their sexuality, it has gay women in there, and it's just beautifully written. And the myth of Iphis itself is about a young girl who is raised as a boy and falls in love with another girl and is um, betrothed to marry this girl 
on the assumption that she is a boy and um, so she prays to the gods and the gods turn her into a boy so that um, it's never discovered that she wasn't born a boy um, and it's kind of playing on those themes um, in, a, in a contemporary setting. It's beautifully written. Ali Smith is just a wonderful writer and if you're reading contemporary Scottish literature she is just a must read. More recently though actually a book I really really enjoyed this year in 2018 which was in fact written by a Scottish author and is set in Glasgow is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. Now the central character in the story wasn't originally born in Scotland but she was moved to Scotland after something quite sad happened in her childhood and she spends the rest of her life living and working and studying previously in Glasgow and it is such a wonderful book. It's one of those books where I was a little bit apprehensive going in. I was a little bit unsure of the character at the beginning because she is quite odd. But as the book goes, you become so endeared to her. She becomes such an endearing character for all of her eccentricities. She pretty much lives a very samey life. Every day is the same for Eleanor. She goes to work five days a week. She spends her weekends by herself. She occasionally talks to her mother on the phone and she has her routine. Until one day, her and a co-worker save a man who's having a heart attack in the street and just this small incident kind of starts a chain of changes in her life. She both starts to reflect on her past and what happened in her past and makes new friends with her co-workers, with the man they found in the street, with his family and it's about the power of friendship, the power and importance of small interactions um, and, and yeah it feels like a book about friendship and about coming to terms with oneself you just feel so connected to her and the other characters as the story unfolds and I felt so caught up in her world and I really really enjoyed this one. And this is one I actually did listen to on audiobook and I would highly recommend the audiobook because I think it just sort of adds to the fact that you feel like it's set in Scotland because it's narrated with a Scottish accent and I really enjoyed that. A contemporary Scottish author whose book is actually set in the past that I'm going to mention is Poor Things by Alistair Gray. Alistair Gray is both a novelist and a playwright and an artist and his book Poor Things is the only one I've read so far but I really enjoyed this story. It is somewhat inspired by Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, it also has allusions to Jane Eyre in there, it's very much packed with uh, intertextuality from various different literary classics and the element of Frankenstein in this story is that a physician has found a young woman's body as well as the body of her newborn baby and he, to save this woman's life, takes the baby's brain and puts it in her brain, like takes out her brain and puts the baby's brain in there and brings her back to life or at least that's what he says he's done and she is reborn with no memories, she's very childlike, she's getting to know the world for the first time but at the same time being this beautiful young woman and our narrator is actually a friend of the physician who has done this and he comes into their life and meets this young woman and becomes fascinated with her and it's such a fascinating story. A lot of it very much feels about the kind of objectification and the um, infantilising and possessiveness around the treatment of women. Um, again, it's so packed full of references to other literary classics that that's a lot of fun if you like that kind of thing. And it's just so surreal and weird and quite witty and I would just highly recommend it again. And you certainly don't need to have read Frankenstein to read and enjoy this book because I actually read it prior to reading Frankenstein as well. But another one of my favourite Scottish authors is John Burnside, which I'm sure is no surprise to you if you knew John Burnside was Scottish that so I would mention him in this video. He is a poet and a novelist. And my favourite novel by him is The Dumb House. Now, I could not tell you whether The Dumb House is set in Scotland or not. I can't remember whether it actually gives a location specifically in the book. And I tried to Google it and can't figure it out. But I think it doesn't really matter. It's still an enjoyable novel by a Scottish author. This one is a much darker, unsettling novel. So it's not for the faint of heart. It's about a man who's obsessed with the soul and the innateness of language and where the language comes from, if it's part of the soul. and he from a young age starts experimenting on animals to try and learn more about life and the spirit and this continues on into his adult years until he has his own children and he uses them as the subject of his experiment to figure out whether language is innate within us in our soul or not. Um, it's unsettling exceedingly so um, very dark but so interesting, such an interesting study of what's going on in the process of this man's mind and how um, 
his desire for knowledge and his experiments go further and further and his complete sort of lack of empathy for fellow humans and it's disturbing but fascinating and so well written it's so so well done I couldn't do this list without mentioning Carol Ann Duffy so Carol Ann Duffy is a poet and um, she was actually the poet laureate for a while she's a Scottish poet and she is much beloved across the UK she's also pretty much uh, as far as I know, taught in every secondary school in Scotland <laughs> there is. At least everyone that I know uh, who went to secondary school in the same sort of decade that I did studied Carol Ann Duffy in English. She has written a vast amount of poetry, various different collections, so if I were to pick one to recommend you it would probably be The World's Wife. Now what's really interesting about The World's Wife is that it is from the perspective of various different legendary, historical, mythical, fairy tale women. We have characters like Mrs. Faust and Mrs. Sisyphus, Mrs. Midas, Queen Herod, even the devil's wife. Characters or historical figures that you usually wouldn't hear about if they even existed, whereas their husbands were incredibly famous and she kind of posits the personalities and thoughts of these women, these sidelined women that were perhaps there standing beside these men or behind these men and it's such a unique and interesting concept. It originally came out in 1999 and I think it still really holds up and is a classic poetry collection that everybody should give a shot. But I wanted to finish off my recommendations with a mention of a children's picture book series because obviously my first introduction to Scottish literature, minus all the Burns poetry we read in nursery, which we did, um, was through picture books and one of my favourite series as a kid was the Katie Morag books. So the Katie Morag books are set on a fictional Scottish island but they feel very much to um, capture the, the atmosphere and the landscape and the sense of living on a Scottish island and the beautiful landscapes and the culture and it, they're so beautiful to read, they're so beautiful to look at and such great fun. I loved these books as a child so if you do know any children or you still enjoy write, reading picture books as an adult I would highly recommend checking them out and in them we basically just follow Katie Morag's everyday life and adventures on this island. Those are my recommendations for this video. I feel like before I get any comments I have to say I of course haven't read everything so if I've missed something off it's possibly because I haven't even read it or it might be because I didn't like it but there are a few Scottish authors that are really high up on my TBR list like James Kelman, Robert Louis Stevenson who I haven't read I know, um, Ian Banks, Michelle Faber, Naomi Mitchison, authors I really really want to read and will it hopefully eventually do so and you will hear my thoughts on those books when I get around to them because they're all pretty famous well respected Scottish authors so apologies that they didn't make it onto this list of recommendations but hopefully I've given you a few to check out in the meantime if you're interested in reading more Scottish literature and that you've enjoyed this video and um, if you've read any books from Scotland and um, I'd love to know your thoughts on them what do you have a favourite piece of Scottish literature are you interested in Scottish literature and I'd also love to hear what your favourite book or series from your own country is um, that you would consider a piece of literature from your home. I would love a recommendation from there because I know so many of you are from various different exciting and intriguing places so do let me know in the comments down below. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!